Marcus DePaula here from the Podcast Audio Lab with a demonstration of a few different mics that people typically use for streaming, video chat, and podcast recording sessions. The goal of this video is to let you hear the differences between a laptop's built-in mic, the mic on a basic set of earbuds, AirPods, a dynamic USB mic, a condenser USB mic, and then a set of professional XLR microphones with an audio interface, all in an untreated echoey space. This is not my typical recording studio. I've tried to set each mic's gain so that they show about the same meter level as I record in Audio Hijack here on my laptop, but I'll make sure to adjust the final volume and post, which you'll be able to see on the screen as I talk about each one. Let's start out with the laptop's internal microphone, which is on the left side here. Laptop microphones are typically omnidirectional, which means they pick up everything around them in 360 degrees. It ends up being between 18 inches and two feet away from the sound source, which is my mouth. With it being that far away and picking up everything around it in 360 degrees, you should be hearing a ton of my room and not enough of my actual voice. Now, if you're also using video, the laptop mic will pick up a ton of fan noise since when you record and stream video, it's churning through a lot of processing power and it has to cool off your computer's processor. And that microphone is right next to the fan, so you should be able to hear it right now. Yes, software noise cancellation can eliminate unwanted noise, including voice echo, but it can also greatly degrade the already poor audio quality that's being picked up by this tiny microphone that's so far away from your mouth. So I turn off the noise cancellation when I can, but to be able to turn off noise cancellation, you have to be wearing headphones. Otherwise, the other people on your call will hear a really loud echo of their own voice coming through your speakers back into your microphone and into their ears on a delay after they talk. It's very annoying. Next, we'll take a listen to the Omnidirectional Electret microphone in these ear pods that's plugged into my laptop. A lot of earbuds have microphones like this on the wire, which is this little rectangle here. You can probably hear the handling noise as I touch it, but it's pretty much like a lapel mic that you might see used on videos. And when I don't have any other option, it's, it's what I try to get my guests to use on the podcast that I produce because you can get it really close to your mouth by holding it up like this. It is, of course, omnidirectional, just like the laptop mic. So it picks up everything in the room. So you're probably hearing quite a bit of the room echo still, but it is at least closer to my mouth so that it's picking up more of my mouth and less of the room noise. You just have to be careful of the handling noise and then brushing up against a beard or hair or clothing or earrings. So you just have to be aware of that. And I can't hear my own microphone right now as I'm talking into it. So you'll have to let the other person know when that noise happens. A lot of my clients that have business podcasts love to use their USB headset mics. I don't have one to demonstrate for you, but they end up sounding a lot like this little microphone that's on this wire. So you can just keep that in mind as you listen to this. Some headsets do have noise cancellation built in, but one more thing to keep in mind with this type of microphone on an earbud or a headset mic is that if you get it too close to your mouth, you end up getting a lot of breath on there, which sounds terrible and is almost impossible to completely edit out. So make sure that headset is far enough away to where it doesn't pick up your breath or the ear pod if you're having your guest hold it like this. All right, the third thing I want to show you is a very popular device, especially for people doing a lot of video streams. It is the AirPods. And I want you to just take in the sound of these. Just soak it in. If you can't tell that these sound terrible, even compared to what we've heard so far, you might want to get your hearing tested. <laughs> 
There are two reasons why these sound worse. One, their mic is not in front of the sound source. They're tucked up here next to my head, right by my ear. Two, they are wireless and they use the tiniest circuit possible to fit in this little earpiece. So to reduce the amount of data that has to be transmitted and processed from such a small chip, they cut off both the low frequencies and the high frequencies, which is where speech intelligibility happens. It's not quite as bad as a straight up phone call, but almost. And they do have built in noise cancellation, which again can really wreck the audio quality if you're not careful. I would say it's better to stick with the laptop mic and just use the AirPods for listening if this is all you've got. Again, here's the AirPods. And then here is the laptop mic to compare. Notice the difference in tonal quality, but also how much of the room echo is in each one. Which one do you think is better? Remember the AirPods are up here next to my head behind my mouth. And the laptop mic is about 18 inches in front of me on the table. All right, now let's get into some proper microphones for recording. First is one of my favorite mics, especially since it only costs $69 and sounds surprisingly good for that price. It's the Samson Q2U. This is a dynamic microphone with a cardioid pickup pattern designed for use on stage, which means it's made for you to get close to it. Cardioid means that it picks up most of the sound from in front of the mic a little from the sides and none at all from the back, which helps it to pick up more of your voice and less of your room. And right now I'm about 12 inches away from the microphone, which is how a lot of people end up using this mic with the desktop stand that comes with it. This is what it sounds like when you are close to the microphone, which helps pick up a lot more of your voice and even less of the room noise. Compare it now to what it sounds like when you're 12 inches away from the microphone. How much room reverberation and noise can you hear compared to my voice? Now back to being within a couple inches. Notice also how the tone of my voice changes when I get closer, being warmer and fuller due to what is called the proximity effect compared to when I'm further away like this, which makes it sound thinner and have a lot less low end. This difference in tonality when you're further away from the microphone compared to up close is very common difference between dynamic microphones and condenser microphones. So keep that in mind. Speaking of condensers, next up is a really popular podcasting microphone, the Blue Yeti, which is a multi-pattern condenser mic, meaning that you have to make sure the switch on the back of the mic is set to cardioid, which looks like an upside down heart, so that it mostly picks up what is in front of the mic, which is here and not here. This is not the front of the mic. The front of the mic is here where the logo is. I hear too many podcasters using this mic in omnidirectional mode, which means it is picking up all around the mic. So I can talk into the top of it if I wanted to. <laughs> and when it's picking up all around the mic like that, it's gonna be picking up all of the room noise around you as well. Let me switch it back to cardioid here. And just like all the other microphones that we're talking about today, it sounds better the closer you get to it. It'll pick up more of your voice, less of the room. You'll hear me say that a lot. And again, please make sure you're speaking into the actual front of the mic, not the top, especially when it's on cardioid, it picks up less on this side of the mic than it does if you're actually talking into the front. It actually sounds pretty good when you're talking into the front of it. The last three microphones I'm demonstrating require using a separate audio interface with microphone preamp since they all have three pin XLR connectors instead of a USB connection. The Samson Q2U and Blue Yeti use preamps and analog to digital converters that are built into the mic itself, which make it easier to set up, but which don't sound quite as good as most standalone audio interfaces like my Sound Devices Mix Pre 6.2 that I'm using here. The first XLR mic we'll listen to is mostly used in news podcasts on location interviews, 
and in narrative audio production for fiction podcasts, TV shows, and film. It's a small diaphragm condenser known as a shotgun microphone, which has a hypercardioid pattern, which means a very tight cardioid pattern, only picking things up in a narrow pattern right in front of the microphone. And I actually have it just out of frame here above me, which is typically how they're used for video production. This Audio-Technica 875R is one of the most affordable shotgun mics you can get, and it sounds excellent for just $169. It's designed to be a little further away so it can be out of camera shot just above the person speaking. As a really sensitive condenser mic, it can still pick up quite a bit of the room noise right in front of it, so I still recommend getting as close as possible to it when you can. All right, now let's compare the shotgun condenser to this large diaphragm condenser. This is a Tech Zone Stellar X2, which is one of the many more affordable copies of professional studio microphones designed in Germany in the late 1960s. These large diaphragm condenser elements pick up absolutely everything. So I only recommend investing in one of these studio condenser mics if you have a recording space that has adequate acoustic dampening. Even when I'm close up like this, you can still probably hear a ton of the room. But when I get further away, it really picks up a ton of the room noise and reverberations bouncing off all the walls, ceiling, and floor. If you have one of these, again, make sure you're talking into the front of the mic and not the top or the back. And as always, the closer you get, the better because it picks up more of your voice and less of the room noise. So make sure that you're using a pop filter because these are very susceptible to plosives, P's and B's, and the breath coming out of your mouth. Finally, let's listen to the microphone I choose to use the most for podcasting, as well as my live streams and even Zoom calls. The Shure SM7B, which is a large diaphragm dynamic XLR microphone. This mic is designed to be used with your lips practically touching it, since the capsule is actually mounted inside a couple inches away from the end of the microphone. You can see it is end address and not side address. When you get further away, it sounds much thinner because of that proximity effect that we talked about that happens with dynamic microphones. While it may not pick up as much of the room noise as a large diaphragm condenser, it will still sound much better overall when you are closer. There are obviously a lot more microphone options out there. I mainly wanted to provide a sampling representing each type of microphone so you could hear the difference in an untreated room, which is how most people will use their mics. Remember that if you can record in a carpeted room with plush furniture, bookshelves, and curtains, you'll get a much better sound than if you record in a sparsely decorated office with hardwood floors like the space I'm in now. Remember to stay close to your mic, always use headphones, and watch that input gain level so your voice and message comes across as clearly as possible with no distractions.